There is no such thing as an untouched bag. And I think a lot of people don't realize this, that if you buy a pristine bag on the pre-love market, it can be the same as buying a fresh bag from the store. Sometimes it can be cleaner, because I can tell you guys, there are bags that are sitting in Louis Vuitton and Chanel that have been there for like five years, and nobody bought them, and a million people tried them on, and at that point, it's the same level of dirty as a pre-love bag. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, I'm Kiss. Please like and subscribe to my channel. You'll super love it, especially if you love handbags, because I can't stop talking about them. I had a few comments the other day talking about pre-love bags, and how um, yeah, a few of you guys said that you don't like buying pre-love bags because you you get scared of it being too dirty and like you don't like the idea of it being used. And I wanted to discuss this um, today and why I think buying pre-loved is really cool. I know a lot of you guys like pre-loved bags and some of you only buy pre-loved bags. Firstly, in regards to the dirtiness thing, I have definitely bought bags in the past that felt really dirty and it did gross me out a little bit. I bought a few vintage Chanel bags. I had this like vintage jumbo that I got from cash converters for really good deals, like 3000 Australian dollars around that 3,500. And you know, like a uh, jumbo in Chanel at the moment, I mean, it's going to be different is about 15 K, which is a lot. So, you know, in that case, you're getting the Chanel look for like, you know, a fraction of the cost. Not to mention that um, I really enjoyed the luscious gold hardware on it. And the leather was also really luscious. It was this beautiful, thick lambskin. It's really not comparable to today's lambskin. It was very luscious the lambskin. However, I did wipe it down with some uh, leather conditioner and it did have some dirt on the on the cloth and it did feel rather dirty and just the feel of the bag was a little bit musty, it was a bit dirty. I did end up selling it because it did feel a little bit too dirty. Now, I do have like most of my bags are actually pre-loved and I even have some vintage pieces like this Red Kelly which um, seems like maybe the previous owner didn't wear it a lot and this one doesn't have that same kind of a dirty feel that I have experienced with other older bags. I worked um, at a consignment shop. I did sometimes come across bags that were rather dirty and like, you know, they, they could have taken the bag out clubbing and they had like stickiness to them and, and like makeup. And yeah, I, I wouldn't... I personally don't enjoy buying bags that are in that condition, that they're really dirty, where they have makeup and glitter and all this stuff on it. Um, however, I feel like if you buy a bag for a good enough deal, you can get some satisfaction out of restoring and bringing the bag back to life as well. And that is also a thing that I think a lot of people really enjoy about pre-loved, is that they can find this like little... Um, gem in the rough <laughs> and kind of bring it back to life. This Ferragamo bag was really disgusting when I got it for, in the mail. I got it for about 300 Australian dollars and it is the vintage version of the current uh, model of Ferragamo bag, the Icon bag. I love that bag. It is adorable but I didn't want to pay like three thousand dollars to buy one so i thought why don't just itch that scratch and buy a vintage version and you know i just had to buy some leather cleaner and it you know it came up really well and i, I have, i've worn it a few times but I'm, I'm i'm a bit more i don't know guys when's my day off i like to wear my hermes bags or so even when i'm i'm going to wear like i just love hermes bags i'm obsessed at the moment so i haven't worn this heaps but i you know i think also buying pre-loved it can help you test out whether you like a style so if you buy a vintage version of a bag sometimes it's like a stepping stone to buy one from the boutique or something like that as well or sometimes you might find out that you prefer the vintage one more because you know they don't make them like they used to. I did find it fun to restore this bag and it was nice to bring it back to life and I know a lot of people who collect bags do that as a hobby like they like to buy bags for really cheap that are dirty and bring them back to life. also think there is something really nice about owning a bag that has a story. I recently watched a uh, video by a youtuber called rebecca barton i'll link her below um she has like about 600 subscribers but i don't understand how she doesn't have like 
a few thousand at least because she has such valuable information on her channel guys so subscribe to her channel but um she was explaining uh her about her kelly 32 from the 80s um she said that the previous owner uh, left her a little story about the bag um in the bag like she wrote her a little letter about the bag and apparently the bag was owned by her daughter and she used to carry it in the 90s and she lost it on the train and it came back to her and it had this whole little story to it and i thought that was really cute and you know this bag has seen some better days it has like rips on the edges it's it's very worn out but the thing is, I think there is something so nice about still wearing a bag when it is, like, still, like, quite, quite worse for wear. Like, it is, it's still a gorgeous bag, honestly, guys. Like, I would totally wear this bag, but it is a bit roughed up, and because it's roughed up, she got it for a really good price. But not only that, but there's kind of this, like, cool, nostalgic feel to it as well. Like, it's had a story, it's had a life, and I think it's quite cool to carry a bag that has had a little bit of a life already. Um, if you look at like Mary-Kate Olsen or, or something like that, I think Mary-Kate or Ashley, uh, they sometimes, like, they in the past used to rock really beat up Kellys and I thought that looked really cool. I think a lot of people can agree that it looks quite cool. It's like rescuing a bag and then continuing to rock it. I think that's really awesome and it's, I don't know, I just think that's kind of nice and I would totally buy a Birkin or Kelly that is like under two thousand dollars and totally wear it like that. Now that's actually quite hard to find, but you will sometimes come come across really good deals where the Birkin or the Kelly is just like completely obliterated and you can find it for a really good deal. And I think it's really cool as well to have like a Kelly bag from the eighties. Like how awesome! So yeah. Anyways, um, I think there's something nice about giving a bag a new life and also capturing a moment in time. There is, yeah, I think people get a real nostalgic feeling from bags as well. I know I definitely do. So a lot of people, for example, collect the multicolor collection from Louis Vuitton because they may remember it from when they were really young or in high school and maybe they didn't buy it back then because it was just a dream and now that when they're older and they're, they're working they can now buy these things and a lot of people enjoy the nostalgia of handbags and that is something that you can't get from new bags because well they're the current time so i i also buy bags honestly for nostalgia reasons like i guess for example uh this bag i bought initially because it's from 1991 which is my birth year so i think that's really sweet and i remember well, i went through a phase of being obsessed with 90s runway shows um especially the chanel ones and i remember seeing this bag in denim on the runway so when i saw this purple one i thought it was like capturing that moment in time of you know 90s fashion which was so iconic like they don't do fashion shows like they did in the 90s guys so i just thought it was so priceless to buy like a 90s runway show chanel bag which is why like the heart-shaped bags from the 90s are so valuable because they have that nostalgic feeling and we will never experience that amount of like epicness in from chanel again probably because it's been done like there's nothing fresh there's nothing new it's all like everything from chanel now is referencing vintage things from the past and to be honest like i guess when karl lagerfeld was designing for chanel he did he was inspired by um gabrielle chanel as well obviously with her designs but he bought this like new freshness to the brand which was so ugh, amazing at the time and yeah i just feel like chanel now it just hasn't had that turnover again which is just like mind-blowing it's just kind of referencing things from the past it's not delivering things or being as innovative as it used to be so I feel like that moment in time, like the 90s runway shows, to me are so inspiring and so cool to watch, like the models back then, that that is why I bought this bag at the time. And I have tried to sell it a few times because I don't wear it because it's too small, but I mean, that's why I bought it initially. So I think that's why a lot of people buy pre-loved bags because they get this nostalgic feel out of it and they feel like they're capturing a moment in time. And to be honest, with a lot of collectibles, it is like that, like Pokemon cards that's capturing like that time when you were young, when Pokemon just came out and like going back to that time, which I would never be able to go back to my childhood, guys. Like I am 30 years old, like it's not going to happen. But I honestly think people do buy things sometimes because they want to go and time travel back to that time and honestly 
looking at these pieces, it does take you back to that time, which is, I just feel like it's incredible we can, like, time travel through these, like, objects. Like, it is crazy the energy that some of these things have. And also, I think to understand the current day handbags, you need to understand what happened in the past as well and see, like, how far we've come. And that's why I love going on adventures on the pre-love market because I learned so much um, and particularly at the moment I'm really um, obviously into Hermes bags so there's so much to explore with that and I'm so um, curious to know like what bags came out in the past like what different Kelly bags were invented you know I have a lot of different styles on my wish list and I know a lot of those styles I would not be able to get in the boutique and that is why most of my Hermes collection is pre-loved because there's no way I would be offered some of these pieces in the boutique and their seasonal colors, like their different styles, like, and I got them for like better prices as well. Like my gypsy air, um, in this like lime green color, like there's no way I would ever be offered this in the store because it's just too random. And also I got it for like probably 75% off the retail. So I just feel like if you don't buy pre-loved, you're really like, trapping yourself like you're blocking off so much potential of exploration of handbags but you know I also think that the problem with pre-loved is that it is there is too much to explore like it's too tempting to buy bags you can sometimes fall into a trap of just wanting to buy everything and you know if you start to get a feel of like what is hot and like what is rare you can really kind of force yourself to buy things when there something pops up that's really rare you kind of just immediately will buy it even if you're not you know expecting to buy something that day and I think you can become really obsessive on the pre-love market which is sometimes can be a bad thing and it's definitely something that has happened to me where I've become too obsessed with handbags and like stalking different websites so in a way sometimes buying from the boutique limits you in a good way because you have more self-discipline and you know if it's not in stock you simply cannot buy the bag whereas if you shop pre-loved anything is possible you can pretty much buy everything on the pre-loved market not everything but most things so yeah anyways that's what i think about that um and also i wanted to say in terms of like the dirtiness of pre-loved bags you can still find bags pre-loved that are like as good as the store like there are many people for example resellers who uh, buy bags from the store and then they'll just sell it on so it is like the same thing as buying from the boutique um and you know people uh, bags in the store have also been touched by people you've got to realize this guys like i think some people were saying like when when you think of buying a pre-loved bag you think oh maybe the person didn't wipe their nose like wipe their nose on the bag or like you know they had not clean hands but all the bags in the stores as well, guys, have been touched by people. They've been touched by the artisan, by the people who package it, by the people who quality control, um, by the staff, by other customers trying it on. Like, all these bags have been touched by multiple people. There is no such thing as an untouched bag. And I think a lot of people don't realize this, that if you buy a pristine bag on the pre-love market it can be the same as buying a fresh bag from the store sometimes it can be clean up because i can tell you guys there are bags that are sitting in louis vuitton and chanel that have been there for like five years and nobody bought them and a million people tried them on and at that point it's the same level of dirty as a pre-love bag if not dirtier so yeah i don't know in terms of the dirtiness that's kind of give and take but Yes, I definitely think there are some bags on the pre-love market that are atrocious, but, you know, you can always bring them back to life. So, anyways, that's my thoughts on that. I hope you enjoyed my video. Let me know what you think as well, and I'll talk to you on my next one. Bye!